Hello everyone. I hope you people are doing fine. Your preparations are going well, and you are keeping yourself in good shape. Great. So this is Dr. Vikas Kumar once again. Chetan Bharat Learning welcomes you. So, yeah, in the last ten days or so, we have had a few reading comprehension passages to be discussed. We have taken a test also, and to make matters more interesting. We've covered RC passages on various topics. Now, good students here, you know, ne a request kiya tha hume. Some students wanted me to discuss some fundamentals of reading comprehension passages. The idea was to ensure कि आप सही approach से किसी reading comprehension passage को approach करें. So here we go. This session is all about reading comprehension के basics. How are you going to approach an RC passage? So the very first question that arises before we look at any reading comprehension passage is whether we should read the questions first or the passage first. I am absolutely sure that in your mind too, this question must have come numerous on numerous occasions. So when we talk about a reading comprehension passage, the first thing we need to understand it is that reading comprehension. We are reading that leads to understanding. It's as simple as that. Comprehension is understanding. So when we talk about whether to read the questions first or the passage first, let's understand a few things. Yeah, perfect. All right. Here we go. Now, as a student, as an examinee, if I happen to read the questions first, what happens is I get a shortcut, right? I get an idea. A propose of what has been asked for, right? Shortcut to what is asked for. What does the inter rather the examiner want? Right. Shortcut. Great. Accordingly, if I read the questions first, I shall straight away go to the passage. Right. And I'll try to find. The very things that have been asked for by the examiner, but then there is a question that arises again: Will those things which have been asked for be stated directly at this level? They can. Will those be stated directly? Just level ki hum tayari kar rahe. It is an all India level exam, right? कई लाख स्टूडेंट्स इसमें पार्टिसिपेट करेंगे द स्टैंडर्ड्स विल हैव टू बी वेरी वेरी हाई द पैसेजेस विल नॉट हैव व्हाट हैज बीन आस्ड फॉर इन द क्वेश्चंस डायरेक्टली मेंशनड दे विल नॉट हैव दैट इंफॉर्मेशन मेंशनड डायरेक्टली दैट इंफॉर्मेशन व्हाटएवर इट इज व्हदर इट इज स्टैट्स और the analysis of somebody or an example of something whatever it will be stated it will be mentioned in a hidden manner right the mention will be there but for that to happen in fact in order to be able to figure out what is the exact answer you will have to read not only one line which is directly related to it but the the other relevant lines as well let me quote an example here so let's say there is a question about let's say a bomb blast there is a place xyz there a bomb blast has taken place and many people have died now the question says the question is how many people died in the bomb blast how many people died Right. So this is the question. Now there is some information given. Let's say in Surat, one fifty people died. Let's say in Delhi, we are talking about some bomb blasts, right? In Delhi, the number goes to four fifty. Let's say in Chennai. It is 
220 right and this information is given in you know a scattered manner the first paragraph talks about surat the bomb blast held in surat or in fact happened in surat took place in surat the second one talks about delhi the third one talks about chennai now will i be able to find the correct number of people who died only by looking at one place where the, pen, the passage actually mentions bomb blast no i shall have to read the first paragraph i shall have to read the second paragraph and i shall have to read the third paragraph as well and there you go so when you have to read the entire passage you know that you have to read the entire passage right is it wise to expect a miracle and be able to spot the answer at a particular place in the passage and it is ensured that you don't need to read the, 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 the rest of the paragraph of the passage? It is not. So it is okay to read the questions first but mind you, even if you read the questions first, you need to ensure that you have to read the entire passage. In fact, my dear friends, you don't have to read the entire passage. You have to absorb the entire passage. If there are holes in the understanding, if the understanding remains shallow, the answers, most of the answers will go incorrect and that will defeat our purpose, right? Anyhow, so another point of view, we have, we have talking about, you know, directly stated facts. Let's say the question is, what does the author think about the bomb blast or the bomb blasts rather we are talking about more than one blast Now we need to find the answer to this question. <coughs> Excuse me. Now let's say the author has not commented on the magnanimity or the enormity or the gravity of the bomb blasts, right? But he tells you numbers, you know, so many in Surat, then so many in Delhi, then so many in Chennai, right? That means these are huge numbers. So the author knows or rather believes that the bomb blasts were really powerful. What does that tell you? That tells you that it is not always possible to focus on a particular point and find the, the correct answer to a particular question and to read the entire passage. So if my dear friends, you have to read the entire passage, where is the dilemma? I hope you've, you've uh, got the right answer. Because, you know, an answer to a particular question sometimes, in fact, most of the times, most of the times is not given in one line. It is not there in two lines. Sometimes that, that one central point is surrounded by lines which promote the idea, right? The idea that happens to be the answer. So the way is paved for that answer to come by various sentences you have to read what comes before that you need to read what comes after that great so this seems to be fine i think you've got an idea of what to do so there is no confusion about it when you go into the examination hall you have the paper in front of you it is okay to read questions first but remember you need to observe rather absorb the passage why another reason is that sometimes sometimes not always our mind rejects the other information does the mind reject the other information let's say the passage talks about rather the one of the question talks about okay why is cricket so popular in india right and the passage is about other sports. I mean, all sports. So I may not read carefully what has been stated about football. 
right although there is a possibility that when the author mentions football he may just give me a reason why is cricket so popular in india so while i am reading the passage i am definitely missing out on that information i'm not focusing on it why because my mind is preoccupied with cricket 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 so that is another danger of reading the questions first that is okay <coughs> excuse me even if you read the questions first that that's perfectly fine but then you need to train your mind that i need to absorb the passage i need to understand the passage thoroughly right i hope this is absolutely clear to everyone hmm. let's continue so we are talking about reading comprehension and we have discussed what to read first what not to read first a very important aspect of reading comprehension is central idea what is the central idea my dear friends obviously we are talking about the theme of the passage and what is the theme the theme is around which the passage is built right the story gets developed because har passage kuch kehta hai right every passage has a story right or a theme or a subject so in order to find that central idea what we do is generally it is said that central idea goes like this 5 to 5 so the first five sen lines or sentences lines it may be one sentence in the first five lines right the first five lines and the last five lines you happen to find the central idea there now how do we derive the central idea will the author write that therefore this is the central idea never never ever the author will never write so the one who has written that piece right that excerpt will never write that this is the central idea you will have to find it out you will have to derive it how do we derive the central idea let's find out let's say acha pehle to we need to understand that we need to distinguish facts from the central idea facts and examples do not constitute the central idea they take us towards the central idea right they give us a hint a purpose of the central idea but they themselves do not constitute the central idea then what constitutes the central idea central idea is there we have to derive it the entire passage will obviously constitute the central idea how let's see now let's say there is a teacher right who teaches english or any other subject for that matter in the very first year he gets to teach about 5 english to 500 students and the number of students or the students who have passed some exam happens to be let's say 10% right in the next year he again happens to teach english to 500 students and this time the percentage of those who have passed the exam rises to 12% again in the third year he teaches english to 500 students and this time 15% students pass now we have been asked the central idea on the basis of this information i'll be very happy if you try to find it out right and type your central idea in the comment box honestly take a minute i'm waiting for your answer obviously right now i won't receive those answers but let's see let's see how 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 many people get the get the central idea correct find it out so i'm waiting now for a minute or so think about the stats okay i'll help all my dear students now there is one thing which you need to take into consideration what is hidden here is there something which may be a fact but has not been told by the author find it out is there something hidden that we have so far not seen is there something that's not been told is there something 
that helps us derive the central idea. Let's find out. I believe the time is about to be over. Hmm. Later on, you may honestly type in the comment box and we can discuss the central idea. Great. So anyhow, so you have the information in front of you, right? And we're trying to find out the central idea. In the first glance, my dear friends, it seems that the teacher is improving because 10 to 12, right? 12 to 15, correct, beautiful, 15%, great. Now there are two questions that I want to ask as a student, two questions. When I talk about these hidden facts, what are these? There are a couple of hidden facts which we need to take into consideration. The first one, 500 students, it's a lot of students, again 500 students, Again, 500 students. Total 1500 students in three years. Why so many students? If these are hypothetical figures, the author could have told about 100 students. Anyhow, another fact is hidden fact or a question. Why three years? Is it a random choice of the author? Or is there a design behind it? Now, let me explain the design to you and if you will be able to catch the central idea better. Right, so when I say that there are 500 students, again 500 students and again 500 students. So dear friends, isn't it natural that 1500 students will have a mix of students even if we talk about 500 students those 500 students will not be alive some will be brilliant like you Anna? some will be very ordinary like me some will be average right and there is a high possibility very high possibility that out of 500 students, there will be some students, some students who would be able to pass the test on their own because of their hard work, because of their ability. So where does the teacher come into picture? Out of 10% very J12 or 15, if I have a minuscule percentage, I have a brilliant low-key manu, so 4-5%? That means the teacher has been able to impact only 10 or 11 percent students or in this case mein to 6 or 7 percent. Are you getting my point? That, that was fact number one, hidden fact number one. No, I will erase it now. I will confuse it before you get confused and tell me something else. Second hidden fact is three years. Ka. पहले साल में 500, दूसरे साल में 500, तीसरे साल में 500. Do you think if a person does a particular job for three years, the person naturally improves with experience? मैं अगर कोई काम तीन साल तक एक ही काम करूं, तो मैं naturally improve हो जाऊंगा. आप भी हो जाएंगे. आप तो पहले ही हो जाएंगे. So if this teacher is teaching no, you know, he, he's been teaching English for three years. Do you think after having taught for three years, ye 15%, do you think it is acceptable? Probably not. So first instance mein, jo hume aise lag raha tha ki ye bilkul sahi hai, aur uh, ye teacher improve ho raha hai. So second instance mein to nazar nahi aara. Teacher improve ho rahe ke nahi. Because of two things. One, the mix of students. Right. So this is absolutely clear that because of these two facts that he's been teaching English for three years and you know he has a decent practice. He's had a go with 1500 students. He hasn't been able to deliver the goods, right? So up thoda stats ko hum change karte. Let's see. स्टार्ट से फर्क क्या पड़ता है 
अब हम 50 स्टूडेंट्स करते हैं फर्स्ट ईयर में 10 परसेंट पास होते हैं अगेन 50, 12 परसेंट एंड अगेन 50, इट इज 15 परसेंट सो यहां देर इज नो चेंज वहां से हमने एक जीरो हटा दिया दैट्स इट नाउ इफ द टीचर हैज डन दिस मच लेट्स फाइंड आउट इफ वी कैन क्रिटिसाइज द टीचर एज मच एज वी कुड इन द इन द इयर ईयर इंस्टेंस here the teacher has been teaching english for 3 years agreed the first thing mix of students that law may not apply here law of generalization we cannot apply it here why because these are just 150 students and there is a high possibility that somewhere you get a batch of weak students i am not saying that it is definite that all students are weak but there is a possibility in the earlier case the possibility of a mix was higher here the possibility of a mix is very low it is quite possible that that the entire batch may be weak right same goes about this and same goes about this now look at this again the second question remains that he has been teaching english for 3 years shouldn't he have improved in the last 3 years my answer to this question is that agreed it is 3 years but how many students how much practice has the teacher had only 50 in the first year on an average 4 students a month that's nothing again 15 in the next year that's not a lot of practice and the same about the final year that means the teacher is still underworked the teacher has still not been exposed to serious or intense teaching so he is short of practice my dear friends we cannot blame him we cannot say that he is improving either because we don't have the stats to prove that but we also don't have the stats to say that he is he has not done well i hope you've been able to find the difference between the two now what i have done is i have only distinguished examples and facts from this central idea that's it problems begin when we confuse the two when we take or accept the central idea or rather the fact is the central idea that is not correct my dear friends never going to happen right All right so next now we are talking about tone tone is a very important aspect and there are many questions on tone okay so let me tell you a few things about my phone if you are interested and if you are not so please thodi der bardash kar lena the first thing about my phone is that 6000 am mah is the battery okay and i don't know how many megapixel is, is the camera let's say could be anything 40 let's say megapixel camera right i'm talking about my phone then another feature could be it is quite uh, attractive let's say Okay so it is blue the color is blue I have thought quite a lot of things I have told you rather quite a lot of things about my phone if the author does this if the author tells you about something this happened that happened this is that 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 then we call it descriptive tone but before that my dear friends i want to ask you another question if it is even if it is descriptive do you think the entire passage will be in the same tone let's say i'm writing a passage about you people in the first paragraph i praise you in the second paragraph i criticize you and in the third paragraph i praise you and end the para and the passage so do you think my tone will be the same do you think there will be such uniformity in my tone there cannot be there cannot be that uniformity why what is the reason behind that 
when an author writes sometimes he becomes sarcastic sometimes he becomes laudatory tarif karte right sometimes he criticizes and then he ends the passage so where is the uniformity of the tone but then there is a question what is the tone of the author then in that situation my dear friends what you need to do is look for the central idea if you have found several tones in one passage look for the central idea if the central idea has been expressed lot it in in a very positive manner right with lot of hope then it is optimistic if the central idea has been highlighted presented posited in a very sad tone then it is pessimistic mind you that okay and tone does change remember whenever you see but however right on the other hand while on the other hand while although though the tone will change these are called tone extenders and what are tone uh, sorry tone reversers what are tone extenders which signalize extension of tone and hmm also all right then further then in addition to in addition to where do i write here maybe in addition to perfect so that's the first tone for you descriptive now let's say मैं कुछ ऐड भी कर देता हूं कि मेरे फोन को बेटर कंपनी कैसे बना सकती थी मैं कहता हूं कि 40 कितना लिखा था 44 शायद मेगापिक्सल अगर वो कर देते 80 मेगापिक्सल ओ नो नो व्हाट डिड आई डू मेगापिक्सल या माई फोन वुड बीन फा बेटर और बेटर हो जाता इफ वो ब्लू की जगह उसको ब्लैक कर देते और भी अच्छा कलर हो जाता थोड़ा द बॉडी शुड बीन स्ट्रॉगर बड़ी वीक है उसकी बॉडी सो जब आप ये देखेंगे ये जब ऑथर अपना सजेशन देते हैं ओपिनियन देते हैं that is not descriptive it is analytical because this is an analysis analysis mein kya hota hai description plus suggestions what needs to be done so this is analytical tone mind you isko dhyan mein rakhiye ye analytical tone hai ye jab author ne apni salah di hai i hope you will be able to remember this hmm chale aage iske baad टोन्स में एक बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट टोन आती है लॉडेटरी 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 क्या होता है भाई द वर्ड लॉड मीन्स टू प्रेज सो जब ऑथर किसी को प्रेज करते हैं तो वो टोन लॉडेटरी हो जाती है वेन दी ऑथर क्रिटिसाइज इज इट बिकम्स क्रिटिकल वैसे क्रिटिकल के दो मीनिंग्स हो सकते हैं अनादर मीनिंग कुड बी एक पूरा एनालिसिस अच्छाइयों का बुराइयों का स्ट्रेंथ्स और वीकनेसेस का उसको भी क्रिटिकल कह सकते हैं बट लार्जली इसी सेंस में यूज होगा देन अनादर टोन इज पेसिमिस्टिक व्हाट इज पेसिमिस्टिक मर गए लुट गए पिट गए बर्बाद हो गए कुछ नहीं बचा सब बर्बाद होगा हो गया होना ही कुछ नहीं है कोई फ्यूचर नहीं है डार्क है दैट इज कॉल्ड पेसिमिस्टिक All negativity, no hope, right? इसको opposite कर दें तो क्या हो गया अगर अभी गिरे हैं तो उठ भी जाएंगे We still have time, we still have chance. That is called optimistic tone. Yes, it totally different होती है If the author shows hope, that is optimism. Okay? लिखते रहे ये आपको याद रहना जरूरी है Next, एक होती है admonishing. इफ आई राइट अबाउट यू पीपल और पुराने कुछ एग्जाम्पल्स 
लेकर मैं लिखूं दैट वो लोग थे जिन्होंने पढ़ाई नहीं की और स्कोर नहीं आया उनका कोई भी कॉलेज में एडमिशन नहीं मिला सो दैट इज अट ऑफ वार्निंग राइट दैट इज अडमोनिशिंग राइट और राइट देन वी हैव इवोकेटिव इवोकेटिव टोन अक्सर पेथॉज इवोक करती है ना वॉट इज पेथॉज दुख सो so, किसी चीज को लेकर जैसे समाज को जागृत करने के लिए लिखी जाती है ये वो वाली टोन होती है इवोकेटिव इमोशंस को इवोक करती है अक्सर फाइन सो यू नो अंग्रेजी में अबाउट दस हजार एडजेक्टिव सो इट इज इम्पॉसिबल टू बी एबल टू रिटेन ऑल ऑफ दोज बट लार्जली ये वाली टोन्स हैं जो इस्तेमाल होती हैं जो डिस्क्रिप्टिव थी वो सबसे ज्यादा होती है सबसे ज्यादा ओके वी ऑल्सो हैव एक्सप्लेनेटरी टोन्स जहां पर ऑथर कुछ एक्सप्लेन करते हैं देन एक इंपॉर्टेंट है नैरेटिव वॉट इज नरेशन भाई नरेट आप स्टोरी को करते हो जो चीज हो चुकी है सो वेन एन ऑथर इज टेलिंग एन इंसिडेंट दैट इज नरेटिव टोन I hope you've been able to understand all this. नहीं तो आप कॉमेंट बॉक्स में टाइप कर सकते हैं वट एवर योर डाउट्स आर एंड वी शुड ऑब्वियसली टेक दो डाउट्स इसके बाद वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट इन्फ्लुंस चलिए बहुत ही इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन होता है अक्सर पूछा जाता है नाउ द वर्ड इन्फ्लुंस मीन्स अ कंक्लूजन दैट यू हैव ड्रॉन इसके दो पैरामीटर्स हैं वन A statement should not be, I mean, something should not be stated directly by the author. If I say, let's say, चलिए एक example देखते हैं पहले. दूसरा parameter है must be based on facts. So taking these into consideration, let me try to help you with a With an example, अब हमें इन्फ्लुंस इन्फर करने के लिए कहा है कुछ तो अभी तक हम ये समझे कि करेक्ट इन्फ्लुंस जो होगा ना वो डायरेक्टली स्टेटेड नहीं होगा और वो फैक्ट्स पर बेस्ड होगा कभी भी बियॉन्ड द फैक्ट नहीं जाएगा वो सो देर इज अ क्वेश्चन फॉर यू देर इज सम बैट्समैन हु गॉट आउट आफ्टर स्कोरिंग अ सेंचुरी आफ्टर स्कोरिंग अ सेंचुरी वो बैट्समैन आउट हो गए राइट अब इन्फ्लुंस के ऑप्शन है फर्स्ट ही स्कोर एटलीस्ट 100 हंड्रेड रन अब ये तो उन्होंने बनाए हैं सेंचुरी बना के वो आउट हुए यू बीन टोल दैट राइट टू यू थिंक इट कुड बी अ वेरी गुड ऑप्शन लग भी रहा है बट टेल मी वन थिंग वॉट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन अ सेंचुरी एंड हंड्रेड रन नन दैट मीन्स दी ऑथर हैज स्टेटेड दिस इन अदर वर्ड्स दिस कैन नॉट बी द इन्फ्लुंस आई होप इट इज क्लियर टू यू दिस कैन नॉट बी द इन्फ्लुंस सेकेंड वन ऑल राइट सो दी ऑथर इन फैक्ट द बेस्ट बैट्समैन मस्ट हैव हिट मैनी फोर्स एंड सिक्सेस सिक्सेस कैन वी इन फर्द दिस वी डोंट नो इन हाउ मेनी नंबर ऑफ बॉल्स हैज यू स्कोर दिस सेंचुरी दस वी कैन नॉट टेल वेदर ही इज हिट फोर्स एंड सिक्सेस और नॉट Again, we cannot infer this. Then he is a good batsman. This seems to be the correct answer, but it is not. He is a good batter. Why? Because we don't know about other matches, right? Right, he scored a century. Might have scored. Perfect. But do we know how does he feature in other matches? The bowling could be very weak this time, or it could be a very flat wicket. There are thousands of factors which come into play, right? So we don't know how does he score in other matches. We cannot infer any of these. On the basis of this, we can only infer that the batsman played well that day. he played well in that match and that is the best choice i hope this is clear to everybody hmm 
I said this earlier also. If you have doubts, you are most welcome to discuss. Okay. Factual questions. We also come across factual questions. These are the easiest of all. You read the passage well. And how are you going to read it? I told you at the beginning of the passage. Right. So read the passage well. Find the answers out. Clock it. Right. So that'll be it for today. I hope you've been able to understand the basic techniques, the fundamentals of reading comprehension. And I also hope that it helps you a great deal. And whatever doubts you have, whatever trouble you have, you're most welcome to discuss whatever things you've not been able to understand. Abhi hum koi risk nahi lenge. Sidha December mein exam hai. Let's take our best shot. Right? Bye-bye. Take care.